Once you're onto the assembly step of your Sand Trooper backpack, the first thing you're going to want to do is take all of your completed pieces and put them together temporarily with masking tape. So a lot, doing this allows you to visualize where all the pieces will go, what the pack will look like, if your proportions are off, if there's anything that you need to change um, without having made any permanent attachments. Also, when you do this process, you are able to then take a Sharpie or a pencil and mark different holes and different locations where these things should be attached to the seat trays. So doing this is a great way to lay everything out and then also mark where you need to cut and where you need to drill so that you can get all these pieces attached. On my frame, the only thing that I have attached so far is this red strap and the mortar tube. So the mortar tube is attached pretty simply on the back side here. You can see if you look closely that there is a wire that is wrapped around the frame that's then through two, two holes that I drilled into the mortar tube just to hold that in place. So this is something you could just snip if you need to, easily removable. Also, on the top of the mortar tube, there is a hole drilled on the outside to allow for a bit to go in that will then screw um, the mortar tube into the frame here. I put a little piece of wood, a uh, little dowel in here so that a wood screw could then get a little bit more grab to hold this in. Both of those are very removable, so it's easy to take on or off. Also, this hole is screen accurate. The, uh, the film used backpacks did have that hole there for that same purpose. Um, I guess one other part that I didn't mention is this uh, backpack strap holder. So in the original Caramore frames, they had a little small uh, metal bracket that basically just keeps the straps from sliding off to the edges. So I added this. This is part of a hose clamp that I just straightened out. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other strap right now, but this strap uh, is attached with some white shoelaces, which is also accurate from the film. And then this is an aluminum bar that sits across here on the red strap. So let's put the other one on. So I'm gonna cut off this excess here and then just tape these down with some masking tape. I wanna leave enough though so that it doesn't uh, fray or get loosened up and unravel. And just to share with you what this looks like on the original frame. So here's an original Caramore frame. It originally had these three red pack straps on it and they do have the aluminum bar, and then they also have those white shoelaces. So this is what we're trying to replicate here by doing this. So basically what this did on the original pack was it kind of added support, so this would sit against your back. So this was kind of like a makeshift padding on the original frame. Um, also, some people think that the screen use packs actually had the C trays attached directly to these guys so this they the seat trays would have just been kind of sagging off of the red straps so that's a possibility of how they originally assembled the entire thing and maybe part of the reason that they left these straps on rather than taking them off all right next up we are gonna hit the bottom seat tray so the bottom seat tray is the one that is gray and we can see here that it has the radio the siphon the canteen or bee stinger on it um, and we got to figure out a way to make sure that those guys are attached correctly. Hopefully from the, the first step you were able to get some holes drilled uh, for where things need to be attached. Also after you've um, set everything on the backpack to do a test assembly, make sure you label which direction things go, especially on symmetrical items like the seat trays. So for example here I've labeled this as the bottom tray, I put some lines where these brackets are going to go and I also labeled on the tray itself, which is the bottom piece. So this is the bottom tray, and this is the bottom part of that. And judging by these holes, this is where this one sits. So I know that this is where this tray sits, and then this guy, bottom tray, and then I know that this is the bottom. So I know that this is where this guy goes. You'll be able to figure it out with trial and error, but it's helpful to leave notes for yourself. So this is how the trays are gonna sit, but this isn't how they're gonna be supported. The way they're gonna be supported is with these. So these metal brackets are going to go in and I have just taped these bolts on the outside here so that the, they're sticking through. So they're not really a glued or attached. You could make this a more permanent bond, but this should be okay for now.
Okay, so this is the right alignment, and I can tell because I can see the holes aligning underneath. Great. So the way that this is going to work is that this tray and these guys, these bolts are going to poke all the way through to the metal bar on the bottom. Let me see if I can flip this over. And then these are going to have nuts on them. So all of the weight of the entire backpack is going to be supported by the aluminum bars and the frame, not by the plastic seed trays at all. This is where our siphon is gonna go. So our siphon is gonna attach here and here. Um, we have a hole here that we're gonna put a little screw to hold this guy in, and then these two are gonna go into these threaded inserts here on the top. On the siphon, we do have one piece of assembly here. So on the bottom of the siphon, this bottle is attached. The way that this works is we have a wooden beam across here that's then screwed in on each side. These are, holes are filled in with Bondo and have been sanded and painted, um, but there are screws there holding that and then also some E6000 to keep it from spinning. And then inside of it, in the center, we have a threaded insert that we've screwed into a hole that we pre-drilled. So what that's gonna allow us to do is to have a threaded rod come out of the bottle here. So this is a piece of threaded rod that's M4 that matches the bolts. Um, and this runs through another piece of wood that has been attached as a cross beam in the bottle. And then the mushroom cap sits on top, screw that down tight to hold it in place. And that will allow us to simply set this in there. And screw it on. So now we have a nice sturdy attachment that's very removable. So this is nice for trooping and for packing. So if you need to put your backpack into a uh, armor box, you can easily remove this to keep it from breaking off or getting bent. So now that we have that attached, pretty much the entire siphon is ready to be attached onto the frame. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually pull off these brackets the way that they are aligned and just kind of hold them in place so we know where they go. So we know that this is where these brackets are going to sit on the bottom tray. So what we can do now is take some of our screws here, some of our M4 bolts, and we're gonna run those through. Uh, let's see which one. Okay, so this is gonna be our siphon. So let's run this one through. So we're gonna run a bolt through like so, oops. And then we will be setting the siphon on here like this, and we just need to feed that screw into that threaded insert and then tighten it down. So this bolt here is going through a hole that I've drilled in the siphon right there, and I'm gonna have to put a nut on the end of a screwdriver to hold it in place so that I can get that screwed in. So I just realized this would have been a lot easier if I took this off first. Next up, we have the radio attachment. So just wanna show you really quick, something fun's so on this radio. I know a lot of people have done similar things. The wire is just for looks. And then on the radio front, I actually have this attached with magnets. So you can open this up. If I ever wanted to put a radio or some kind of speaker in here, I could easily access it and take this on and off with this removable wire. For now, I am going to just assemble it as is. I realized I made a mistake here. So when I was creating this, this uh, faux leather exterior piece, I should have aligned this more offset to the side here because there are these little leather feet pieces they get put on and it would have been nice to put this seam line right underneath where those like uh, little feet go so that way it's more hidden so this was a bad plan or potentially just put it on the corner so next time i would have done that differently another piece of 4x that's going to sit here to help assist with pressure distribution All right, so now all of that weight for the radio 
is being set onto this aluminum bracket that will then be attached to the frame. So the last piece that goes on here is this canteen, and the canteen is gonna be attached about like so. The self-tapping screw is what will go into the 4X, and the regular M4 bolt is gonna go here. Okay, that pretty much does it for all of the pieces that will be attached to our bottom seed tray. So let's go ahead and actually put it onto the frame now. Now what we can do is we'll take our entire seed tray set up and we are going to feed it through here. Let's see how this goes. And then try to align it up with the screw holes that are in the aluminum crossbars. So that is our whole bottom attachment. Oh, I need to put the... All right, now we are on to the top tray. The brackets for the top tray are a little thinner because these will be holding a lot less weight than the bottom tray. The, uh, the pieces that attach to the top are a lot smaller. So now that we're certain where the alignment of everything will go, we can go ahead and take this entire thing off. For the Brexton box, which is a kit, comes in two pieces, the top plastic piece and then the lid here. Um, this is how those are assembled. And they're glued together with E6000 on the inside. And then on the back, of this lid that there is a piece of wood that I have then set three insert screws into that we can screw into. One more backing piece of 4X. All right, now we have our second bottle to attach for the top tray. Now, this bottle also has two inset screws so that it can be attached. And the way that this is put together, you can actually see in there that there are two bent pieces of 4X. Um, this is another reason I love 4X is you can just take a heat gun. So I took like a glass jar and laid two pieces of 4X over it, and then took a heat gun and just basically heated them up enough that they just melted over that glass jar that fit perfectly the shape on the inside of this. This is a dog shampoo bottle. And what I did was cut the top off, and this actually comes off as well. So these are the three pieces that go into this, this bottle. So we have the mushroom cap has the lid glued into the top with E6000. And then the bottle itself was this size before. And then I cut two little slits on the edges here. And that allows this to compress a little bit and then slide in. And then you can also just attach the lid or attach the uh, mushroom cap this way. Now for attachment here, the the bottle actually needs to sit away from the the seed tray a little bit. So it actually has these little spacers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two spacers here and then we're gonna have one spacer here. Actually, I might have that backwards, but either way, we're gonna have some spacers that's gonna push that away from the seed tray a little. The two spacers on the top and one space around the bottom. So this guy isn't too heavy, so I'm not really concerned about making those really tight. But we have two spacers on the top to push them out this way a little bit, and then we have one space around the bottom. So the reason that we're doing that, as you can see in the reference photos from the screen use packs, that the bottle sits out a little bit at an angle, especially compared to this line here of the Brexton box. So this sticks out a little bit more than the Brexton. So this allows us to kind of emulate that, that line and that line with this guy sticking out. Next up, we have the exhaust. The exhaust will be attached on this side right here 
like so. These screws also have their ends painted black since they will be visible on the outside as well. And there is the exhaust. Lastly, for the top tray, we have the capacitors or sometimes called the shotgun shells. So the way that I did this is these guys are all attached to a piece of ABS plastic with screws through the bottom. And I've removed the two end screws because I'm gonna use these to then run through the seat tray itself to then attach these guys on there. And now we have our capacitors, more shotgun shells attached. And they are supposed to be a little wonky like that. That matches what was, uh, what was used on screen. So let's go ahead and set this guy on there. Okay, once those are coming through, now we can try to set that in and line them up. And that is the final piece of attachment. All right. So that's everything attached to our frame. Nice and sturdy. It's not going anywhere. It's exactly what we want. Awesome. Okay, so the pack straps I took off of an old, actually not old, I just, we got a $1 backpack from Walmart and I took those straps off and then I found some old ones here and sewed these onto the top of the uh, existing backpack straps. If you had those frayed ends, or even if you didn't, just to prevent this from fraying, take a lighter. And just melt that end. And then that will prevent any fraying from happening. Now the attachment on the bottom is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna wrap this loop around here. Just like that. Alrighty, there we go. There are our pack straps. Pack is fully assembled. Just a little adjustment to do. Next up weathering.